Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is material the generated offset bands node. Let's go ahead and look at this node. If we just type in generated and spell it properly band, well, we're going to find two of them. We're going to find generated band, which has been covered in a separate video. And then we have generated offset bands. If we create it, we get a node with a whole bunch of options. We're going to go and look over these options. Now, one thing to note, generated offset bands and generated band have pretty much the same parameters with the difference of offset bands has one extra parameter called bands. So if you watched the video for generated band, you'll pretty much know exactly what this one does. The difference is we get a pair of bands rather than a single band. And I can show you that here. The default settings for generated band creates this, a single band going horizontally. The default parameters for generated offset bands gives us this. We get four bands. Technically, we get two bands. We get a pair of bands here and a pair of bands here. Now let's look at this in the instance. When we pull it up, if we notice here, first of all, we have all these options. The width, sharpness, offset, direction switch, compare, bands, which is our new variable input, which is a scalar, and then input coordinates. When we look at it inside of our material here, and let's reset all of our values to default. If I can click on them properly, there we go. Now we have all of our reset values. We can see this. We end up getting a pair of bands here and a pair of bands here. Now if you adjust your settings, our direction basically determines if it's vertical or horizontal. So if it's checked, we have a horizontal. Sorry, if it's checked, it's vertical. Unchecked, it's horizontal. We have our bands. This is a scalar value. Zero is going to give us nothing. One is our default, which is a pair of bands, which is kind of nice. If you do 0.5, you actually end up with this. You actually end up with a single pair of bands instead of one, which gives us the two bands. And you can, of course, adjust it. Two will give us double the amount, and you can continue up or down as needed. Let's put this back to our default, and we'll move on to compare. Whoops, default. There we go. We'll move on to compare. Compare basically adjusts where these bands fall from the outside edge to the inside edge. One basically is going to pull them in like this. Zero is going to pull them out towards the edges. So if you had two of these boxes together, or for example, if we change the number we had, you can actually see they kind of stack. The default is going to be 0.5, and that's why we end up with this. Input coordinates is technically your multiplier. On the normal band node, if we did two, for example, we're going to get two sets of bands. However, we have a band input. If you notice we do two, we get the same result. Or if we do one here and then we do two here, we get the same result. So honestly, input coordinates isn't really meant for much unless you need to do something specific using texture coordinates because the input coordinates do take in texture coordinates so maybe you need to multiply or do something special. If not, you'd want to go ahead and use your bands scalar instead of your input coordinates vector too. Let's go ahead and reset that to defaults and there we go. Now we have our offset. Offset basically determines where the starting point and the ending point for the bands are. As you can see here, offset of 0 is our default. If we go to an offset of 1, well, it's basically going to cut off one of them. And it's adjustable basically between 0 and 1. You can go above 1, but then you start wrapping on top of each other. Sharpness is how sharp our lines are. 0 is 0% 0 sharpness, so you notice we have a lot of fuzz here. 1 is going to give us crisp lines that are basically not anti-aliased, and they are perfectly... Pixel perfect, I guess. They're, they're straight across. They're not anti-alias. They're very solid lines. Width is the width of the line. If we set this to 0.5, because we have a bunch of lines, we're end up going to fill it up. If we set it to 0, well, we have nothing. Default is 0.25, and we get this as the result. Let me set our that one back. Now, the nice thing is if you play with everything, let's set our bands to like 0.1. We get some thin bands here. And then we can set our number of bands to something like 0.5. We can end up with something like this. Then we can adjust our offset to move them. 
let's say something like 0.5, now you notice our bands are now actually around the edges. So we kind of covered our box. You do something, you know, maybe 0.4. Oh, no, not 0.4. Uh, let's see. I didn't want band. I want 0.5 on the bands, and I want our offset to be 0.4. There we go. We get a little thicker. Then we can increase the width some more. You can end up with something like that. So basically, our offset bands node is going to give us pairs of bands that we can play with, whereas the generated band gives us a single one. Main difference being, if we wanted to have multiple bands, we would use the texture coordinates and multiply. Whereas we actually have a scalar input where we can just multiply here by a parameter and adjust the number of bands. That is going to wrap up our generated offset bands node.